Rosa. I called you a few days ago to get an appointment to talk a little bit about Matilda. Her mother is worried because lately she's been noticing her quite different. She doesn't focus on her studies, she doesn't want to go with her father, she doesn't have many friends and she's always on her computer. She fears that she may have a problem and would like to help her from the very beginning. So she brought her to my office. Hi Rosa, it's, it's great to meet you. My name is Irene. Yes, of course, it's great that you're coming to school to get more information. And I can give you a lot of information about her academic performance and about school, but unfortunately I don't have much information about her personal early years. It's okay, no problem. I got that information from her mother okay, that's when she came the last time. Mm -hmm. Maybe be between the two of us we can make a picture, a more complete picture and identify more easily if there is any reason to justify her mother's concerns, you know, or whether it's just expected, you know, these changes are expected because she just turned 12 years old recently. Yeah, of course. What I do know is that currently she's living with her mother and her older brother since her parents got separated shortly after her brother's birth. And I do know also that now she's living alternate weeks with her mother and her father. Okay, okay, yes, yes. The couple didn't get along very well since the birth of the older brother, who's three years older than Matilda. Yes, yes, it's true. Her mother um, had no plans to get pregnant. Um, and by the time she found out she was pregnant, she was already three months pregnant. Oh, three months of pregnancy, you know. Mm -hmm. And at that time, she tried to quit smoking. But, you know, it, it was so stressful for her mm, to quit smoking. And it produced so much anxiety. She felt so anxious that it was better, you know, not to stop radically mm -hmm. and keep a little bit, you know, okay. for her own sake, for, so she could be more relaxed. You know? So she did smoke the first three months of pregnancy? As well. Yes, okay. yes. She didn't quit radically. She re she cut back mm -hmm. the smoking consumption. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I understand. Yes, yes. In addition, the father didn't accept the situation well, uh, as he didn't think they could assume the changes that another child would bring. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, regarding Matilda's features about her birth, you know, she was born at week 35 of gestation, and her weight was 2 kilos and 750. Mm -hmm. The APGAR score was 6. Okay. Yes. During the first few weeks, uh, so during the first uh, few days, she lost just 270 grams only. And 10 days later, 10 days after birth, she weighed 2 kilos and 8 Hundred, so, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. She recovered mm -hmm. a little bit. When she was born, she had soft hair on her shoulders, on her back, right, and she was covered with a greasy substance. In addition, her parents got scared because her head was bigger than the rest of her body, right. After one month, she was assessed uh, with uh, by using a Brazelton Brazelton scale. And when her head was turned to one side, she stretched, she extended her arm and her leg, and she, she bent the other, the other arm, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. They also found out that when they rang a bell near, near Matilda, near the baby, when she was sleeping, you know, at first she wriggled a little bit, you know, she flinched like a, a little bit, but after... 12 times after ringing 12 times she adapted and she she could sleep yeah, i guess that's normal yeah 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 at the motor level she managed to hold her head upright at around three months old and of age uh, although she couldn't crawl she began to stand upright by holding on to something at 10 months mm -hmm. of age yes at that time her parents had to adapt the house and eliminate all small objects uh, that were, you know, 
at a reaching, she, she could reach them, you know, they had to eliminate them. And she could get, she could pick these objects by using her thumb and the, uh, the, the part of the index finger, which is closer to the palm. So she could grab some, some, some objects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I was also told by the kindergarten school teachers was that when she was smaller, usually her father always took her to school, but he never picked her up and he never really assisted to any kind of parents' meetings or things like that. So when they were asked about this, her mother told that the father was very uncomfortable when Matilda was crying, so he usually would just ignore her. So it was her mother, the one that took care of most of her basic needs. And also when she started going to school, they, I was told that she adapted quite well, and except for the first day that she cried a bit. But she immediately kind of started to play with the rest of the kids. And the very few times when her father came to pick her up, she would not stop playing and she didn't show any kind of affection towards her father. And it was the teachers, the ones who had to stop her and ask her to, to leave school. And they also commented that at the preschool stage, around 32 months, it's when she started to say her first words, but she usually just said like a combination of a couple of words without much meaning. So she didn't have a lot of interaction with her classmate because of that. Mm, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Actually... Um, regarding to what you're saying, you're connecting to what you're saying. Her mother told me mm -hmm. that when she was 32 months old, mm -hmm. yes, it was suspected that she ha she was not at the stage of language development. Yeah. Yes. Corresponding to her age, you know. Actually, it was the father who was suspicious, and he compared Matilda with her older brother yeah. when the older brother was her age, you know. Her mother, at this point, her mother kind of defended her, mm -hmm. you know, defended her by saying she did not think Matilda had a problem, right? The psychologist who evaluated her at the first, the first time, you know, uh, made an observation at the child at school and obtained the following record. We have it in, in the... Yeah, record. I can see it on my screen here. Yes. Okay, yeah. He pointed out that Matilda's social attitude was good. She initiated interactions with her peers although these interactions tended to be based on gestures and productions that were not very well understood by, by children, you mm -hmm. know. The psychologist also observed uh, that some anger was shown, she showed some anger, you know, when Matilda tried to say something and the other children didn't understand her, you know. And in these cases, uh, she would shout, no, you know, strongly, yeah. with great emphasis, and, and would get another toy, you know. Her brother, Matilda's brother, uh, understood her better, you know, understood more her productions, but had difficulties as well, you know, to understand her many, many times, because she expressed herself through pronouns and verbs like play, that, you know, most of the time. So Yeah, I, I see. Yeah, that's right. That actually makes sense with my results as well, because the psychologist applied a couple of developmental tests. In fact, Battelle and MacArthur were applied. And if we take a look at the Battelle scale, because I sent you the results, Here they we, are, can, yes. we can see that they were not very homogeneous, as you can see, because in some things are okay for her age, but some other dimensions are not quite good for her age. Also, the MacArthur scale showed a number of other discrepancies between her productions and what would be expected for her age. You can see them because they are marked in red on, on the results I sent you. Yes, here they are. Yeah. In fact, the report of the psychologist concluded that her language learning was a bit slower than what was expected for her, but because she was so young, they didn't really take any serious measures, but they made a preventive treatment and they gave educational guidelines to the, to the family. And they made sure that they would keep an eye on her development just to make sure that she didn't have any, any developmental disorders. Yeah, very good. Yeah, very, very good. Yes, indeed. Yes. Uh, these guidelines were mainly, mainly carried out by, by the mother, yeah. right? Yes. Yes, true. She, she used to play a game. Uh, this game, which is, you know, you have a word. And you need to get the last syllable and then form a new a new word, you know. She, the mother tried, really, she really tried to encourage her, Matilda's language development, you know. Mm -hmm. And although at the age of five she had trouble counting the syllables 
of the words and learning the songs that were sung uh, at the school, you know. Um, when she started primary school, sometimes after her father left home, the problems already oh, okay. disappeared. Yeah. They, they were not there anymore. I, I also remember that in the third year of kindergarten, a couple of older students came to do a little puppet show. And in the show, there were two little dolls that appeared and they were playing with a marble. And when one of the dolls was gone, the, the other doll changed the marble, the marble of place. So the, the doll that came back didn't really know where it was. And when Matilda was asked about where was the doll, she didn't have any hesitation. And she asked that the doll was going to look for the marble where she left it initially. So she did have some normalized cognitive development acquired around there. That's very also, there is a drawing. I, I sent you the drawing also in the results. Yeah. And we can see that according to the drawing analysis, her development was according to her age group. And more information. Her mother told me that at the age of seven, she loved board games. Oh, okay. That's good. And when she was learning to count, mm -hmm. the mother played Ludo with Matilda, you know, Parcheesi with Matilda, so it could help her, you know, counting. On one occasion, uh, the mother put the red chips in a row mm -hmm. and underneath the... Uh, she put the yellow chips in a row as well, okay? Then the mother spread the yellow tiles, you know? And then the mother asked Matilda, you know, if there were the same number of tiles or not. And she replied, of course, yeah, they are the same number. You haven't added any new, new tiles. That's good as well, yeah. Another relevant fact is that when Matilda was eight years old, uh, her paternal grandfather died. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, she was eight. She was mm -hmm. eight at that time. Yeah. And he was the person with whom she, she and her brother stayed with when she had to be with her father and he had to go out. So it was like the, the main caregiver, you know, when substituting yeah. her, her father, you know. Mm -hmm. As she was very absent-minded and restless, her grandfather used to tell her when she slipped out of his hand in the park, right, uh, that one of those days she was going to kill him with a hot flash, you know. Yes, so unfortunate comment, you know. And uh, sadly, when he died, uh, Matilda got extremely sad. Mm -hmm. Her mother heard how she told her brother that she had killed her grandfather, you know, connecting the fact, unfortunately, yes. As much as she tried to get the idea out of her mind, you know, the truth is that she doesn't think Matilda stopped thinking about it mm -hmm. until much later. Yeah, the truth is that actually she's always been a very sensitive child. I can see that in class. And also the teachers told me that Sometimes she's very sad, especially when she comes after spending the weekend with her father. And I can see that she's also lately having some problems with her academic performance as her last test grades have gone a bit down. In addition, she has a bit of trouble relating to her classmates because I was also told, and I can also see her, that she doesn't really play a lot with her classmates in the playground. She just stays alone for some reason. So I, I can perceive that. Mm. You know, you know. Her mother told me that for the last year at home, she sees her happy. Oh, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Quite, quite. Doesn't, it's a contradiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't make a lot of sense with what we see at school. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. she, so the mother sees her happy at home, and it's because she has a friend on the oh, internet. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I had a short interview with her, and she told me. Uh, making me swear not to tell her mother, uh -huh. okay, that he seems to be a boy of her age, uh -huh. and they are the same age, who understand her very well. But have they met in person? Not at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not at all. They have never met, but she's uh, very excited to meet him, although she fears, you know, she's afraid that if he sees her, he might lose, might lose interest. You know, uh, the other day, he asked her for a picture with her cleavage 
wide open mm -hmm. and hinted that she'd better not wear a bra when she took it, when she took the yeah, picture. That's a bit concerning. That's concerning. Yeah. Might be kind of grooming or, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, that's concerning. Matilda was a little bit confused, which is good, you know, at least. Yeah, thank God. But, but Did she do it, though? She thought he was, the situation was so perfect and he was so perfect that she didn't oh. see there was any problem. Okay, so she did it. Did, she did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No one had ever had such a beautiful and sincere relationship. She, she, that's what she thinks, you know. And yeah, she didn't see any problem when doing that. Mm -hmm. And you know, the only thing she knows about him is at Hondalar 2005. Okay, so just the nickname. She doesn't even know the real name of the person. Okay. She would like to know him, you know, and she would like to know what people who love her think of her body because she feels terrible. She's very aware, you know, conscious. Yeah, that's why she dresses very covered. That's cool. I can understand now. Oh, it, so it fits. Yeah. You see her. Right? Yeah. yeah. She doesn't, she always wears baggy clothes and things like that. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. She's a little concerned about her diet, you know. Oh. Yeah, she is controlling her diet. Also, uh, before, before she used to post more videos dancing in TikTok, okay, mm -hmm. uh, she would always cover her face so nobody would recognize her. Mm -hmm. It fits. Yeah, it, it fits. makes sense. It makes sense. But now she spends more time watching the videos that others, other people, are, are posting, yeah. you know. Uh, she doesn't dare to record herself and post mm -hmm. it, which is a good sign, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but there, there has been a change there, so... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. However, now with Hondalar, you know, the username, yeah, yeah, the Hondalar, she, she, she doesn't know even his real name, everything will be easier. With him, that's, that's what, what she, she thinks. Says. Okay. Everything will be easier, you know. So she does dare uh, because he only wants the best for her, and that might require some kind of intervention. Yeah, yeah. What it's, do you think? it's worth assessing the, the case, I would say. Yes, because there are strong points and at the same time weak points because yes. she's trusting him too much. <laughs>